Welcome back to RBD Block Challenge. Today we are working on block number 14. Look at this beautiful butterfly. It's called Mosaic Butterfly. It's designed by Jennifer Long of Be So Inspired. Now, this is a little bit more of a challenge. As you will notice, each part of the butterfly wing is not symmetrical. And you're gonna make these four and a half inch blocks one at a time. So you're gonna have to pay attention of your block placement to get it in the right placement for the pattern. So the first thing that hopefully you've already done is download the pattern, the mosaic butterfly from our Riley Blake Designs website and you've cut out your materials from the cutting instructions and you're ready to go. So let's get started. Now, there's a lot of little details and little parts to this, so I'm gonna put on my glasses today. And one thing I would suggest that you also get are these little design boards. They're so helpful to organize the wings because you have four parts. So I have four of these little mini design boards and I found them very helpful. Now the first uh, step, it tells you to take these small little squares and they're all different. So again, look for where things are placed. And so it tells you to take the A square I'm just gonna put that right next to it. So I remember that's A. And the C square, that's for one block or one little unit. And then it tells you to take the G and the A. So just like that. And then it tells you to take the C and the G. So C and G. And then the last one is K and G. So you can use this little board to take them over to your machine. Right sides together if you're not using dyed fabric or solid fabric. And we're just gonna use a, a fourth inch seam allowance. Now it's very important to make sure you have a accurate fourth inch seam allowance. And if your blocks are coming in a little bit small, just do a slight scant less than a fourth inch seam allowance. Just ever so slightly. So I'm gonna take it directly to my pressing station. Just clip my threads in between. Open them up, pressing to the dark side. So now that all these units are pressed, it's time to organize them. And these design boards are so helpful. They're just little mini seven by seven boards. And I lay them out just like this because each one of these is going to be a separate part of the wing. So you can see these little squares right in the center there and they're all different. So to keep you organized, keep me organized, I'm gonna use these little design boards. And we're mainly gonna be working on this first corner, this one right here. Okay, the next part in the instructions is to grab your E, and we need to grab one E. Grab one E, uh, one M right here. and 2i, right here. So this is the next step we are going to create. Now you're gonna use a lot of these little O squares. They're gonna go in the corners of these rectangles and some of the other pieces. So we need four here. So we'll put those right here. Now, all through this so long, I've shown you how to mark corner to corner. 
just like this uh, when you're making these units. But uh, we also had a comment on our on our YouTube video and we look at all of our comments and try and improve what we do. And the comment was, why don't you use your Seam So Easy guide? And we know everyone doesn't have one, so we haven't been using them. We've shown you how to mark it, but many of you do have a Seam So Easy guide. So we're, today we're gonna include instructions on how to use your Seam So Easy guide when sewing uh, these units together. Okay. So we'll, we'll put one of these that is marked and the rest are not going to be marked. And I'm going to show you how to use the Seam So Easy guide if you've got one. And maybe you're already an expert and you know, already know how to use it, but I'll just show you how to do that today. So I'm going to give these a quick press. Okay, see this line right in the middle? It's perfectly lined up with your needle. And that can be your guide um, when you don't mark your little units here. So you're gonna line that up, put your fabric underneath the presser foot on one corner, and you have to pay attention of which direction this is supposed to go. So recheck with your pattern, and this is the direction I'm sewing this unit. And then I line up this bottom corner, line it up with this line perfectly straight. Okay. And now you can see this is, this has been marked. And so you can just follow along your. Now these two have not been marked, but you have to pay attention because they go the opposite direction. So both eye blocks don't go this way, they go that way. So you're gonna have to flip it like this. And you're gonna sew like this. So let's clip our threads. Oh, and I like my trim up ruler because it has this fourth inch seam allowance. And now I'm just going to trim. Now, before you cut, look at your pattern and make sure they're going the right way. Because these two of them are going one direction and then the other two are going opposite. And you don't want to start all over. So let's trim down to a fourth inch on all four. Let's take a look. Oh, that looks perfect. Just kind of check those. That looks great. That, this is where you're gonna love being organized on this. So this is gonna go with this block. I'll just kind of give it a quick look. It's just, just trim off there. Okay, this is going with this block. That block. goes with this one and this one needs a little more of a trim. It's a little ski wampus. There. So you can see how helpful it is to stay organized. Okay, let me clean these up. The next step is to take our F and N rectangles. So I need two F and two N.
and we are doing some more of those little white squares and you are going to need two for each of these little units. So lay them out here and you look at the pattern and they're opposite corners like that. So again, you can mark them corner to corner, just like that. We've already marked this one and they're going to go opposite. So if I go that way, I'm going the opposite direction. So marking them is helpful if you um, get a little confused, like I do sometimes, <laughs> of which direction things should go. Or you can use your Seam Sew Easy Guide and just remember when you're sewing, you are gonna go opposite. So when you're sewing, you're gonna go that direction and that, that direction. Whatever you choose to do is great. Okay, I'm gonna give them a quick press and then sew on all these squares. over here clip 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 and trim okay let's take it to our pressing station Okay, we're gonna do the flip and then just press it open. We can let them cool underneath our quilter's clapper. Okay. Now, if you have a seam so easy guide, you don't have to mark your squares, but it is kind of nice to um, mark them so you know you're going the right direction. So we know that's, and again, you want this shape going up this side, diagonal, the opposite side. Take a look. Make sure it's the right direction, up one diagonal, down the next, that's right. We can trim, and I like this better. Oops. Okay, let's press them open, and then we'll bring them back and put them with their little groupings. All right, so the one we're working on first has this one, and I believe that one, that one, let's see, and that one. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, now you can work on the blocks individually. So now that we've done that chain piecing and group uh, sewing, now I'm gonna take one at a time, and it really is easier if you take one of these sections at a time. So we have this section, it's your A and C, and the next thing we're gonna grab is a B, So the B is going to go here. Now just pay attention where this C block is. It's the darker piece is going. You don't want to flip that way. You want to flip this way. And you're going to go right sides together. 
and sometimes I pin it to make sure you know where I want to start and stop but you don't have to so again right sides together I'm going to sew down the side okay we've sewn that together open up I pressed that side, the dark side. Okay, so we've got that sewn. Now we're gonna take our H rectangle and just pay attention, it's gonna go on this side, corner to corner. Okay, check that, looks good. Give it a quick press. And I am pressing to the dark side. Now we take our M, goes on top. I'm gonna sew along there. Open it up, looks good. Okay, pressing to the dark side. Now, now we're gonna put our M on here and make sure it's going the right way. So we put it over here and just trim off those ends. Again, recheck, double check, and that's the right way. This is flipped that way. So we go right sides together. And go so down there. Open it up, looks good. I press it open. And the last little unit we put on the top, it's right there, along with the pattern, right sides together. Looks good, just gonna sew down there. Okay, and this unit, one of four, is finished. So we're gonna lay that there and put it aside, and then we're gonna work on each one, one at a time. So I'm gonna get working on this, and I'll meet you back here when I finish the other three. All right, this is our final unit. Let me give it a quick press. I'm gonna bring it over here. This is how I organized. I, I did one, two, three, four. And it just, again, it just helped me visualize where everything's gonna be sewn together. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this to that and sew along here and then take this um, block to this. Now, I haven't gone through the details of pressing. That would probably take too long, but I did want to show you, you know, how like I press to the dark side on block number four, and then I press to the dark side on block number three. So see how those are opposite? So these seams are gonna nest really well. And that's always helpful for bulk and to help your um, block lie a little flatter.
All right, let's take a look. See how everything's lining up. Looks good, let's give it a press. And just see where it wants to fold. Again, it just flips to one side. Okay, let's take a look at our pattern. It goes opposite. And now we are done with our little design boards, so we'll put them to the side for now. And we can bring this over and lay it out. Okay. We got the middle of the body, which is J of the butterfly, and we have two parts on the two ends. So that unit will need to be sewn. We've got an R, which is on both sides. And then we've got four Qs that go on the ends. So we are going to sew our R long piece on that side. Okay, let's sew these two units. Okay, let's bring them over here to our pressing station. We're gonna press them open. If one of these was just a little longer, just give your, your this base unit a little tug, stretch it out. So that looks good. Open up. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, again, make sure they're going the right direction, is put these Q pieces on the top and bottom. Let's press this open. It naturally just wants to fall like that, so I'm just gonna press it open with the white going to the outside. Like that. All right, that is looking good. Now the next thing we need to do is just sew the body part or a little butterfly. So let's sew. You can press to the dike side if you'd like. It doesn't matter. Okay, bring it back. Again, do one last check. Make sure they're going the right direction according to the pattern, but you know, if you mix them up, it's okay. No one is going to be judging your quilt.
Sometimes I just throw a pin in the middle too. Press it towards the dark side. Okay, that looks good. Flip it over there. Again, making sure you're going the right direction. Flip this over here. And if you have a fourth inch accurate fourth inch seam allowance, this center section should line up with the rest of your block. If not, you can always just give a little tug. And hopefully you're not off that far. Let me just put a pin in the middle. Okay, this is our final seam. Okay, you're almost done. Let's square it up. Okay, let's take a look. Everything is lining up. I don't have to trim anything. It's pulled slightly inside, but that's okay. When I go to sew all the blocks together, I can just give it a little tug. And congratulations if you have finished this block. Jennifer Long gave us quite a challenge, didn't she? I can't wait to see what she does with her own block in this beautiful mosaic butterfly. And join us next time for block number 15.